Hello, I'm Keith Howes, and I was Features Editor for London's Gay News from 1976 until 1979. Sex. Yes, in the 70s, we didn't apparently have as much sex as we do today. That was mainly because we didn't talk about it quite as much as we do today. However, there was one section of the paper that was essential. It was essential from a financial point of view, and it was essential from the whole concept that gay is good. And that was the classified ads. Classified ads were where one person could arrange to meet another person by putting an ad in the paper, i.e. gay news, saying certain things about themselves, maybe qualities of their personality, maybe things about their body, maybe certain things that they liked to do. Mainly, I think they wanted to have what is known as a, a relationship, a gay relationship, a lesbian relationship, a bisexual relationship, or just a relationship. And gay news had many, many, many people answering classified ads and there are probably people in the world particularly in Britain today who met through a gay news personal ad. Now at the beginning WH Smiths refused to stock gay news because it said it was uh, a procurement magazine. It was actually putting ads in to procure sex. So there was a bit of a legal case over it and gay news was exonerated. No, no, no. This was communication. It was not about just raw sex. So the classified ads were an absolute bulwark of what gay news was about. And of course, they brought lots of money into the paper. And they always were prefaced by these words, love knoweth no laws. Now, when I joined as features editor, one of my roles was to bring more normal gay people, ordinary gay people, into the paper and also to make it a bit sexy. So I came up with this little idea of a series called You Tell Us, which would be asking gay people, lesbian people, bisexual people, and maybe a few straight people who wandered into gay places, as they sometimes do. You know, they're curious, aren't they, sometimes? And then they would be found answering these questions. Questions like, how do you pick up someone you fancy? What do you think about the monarchy? What do you think about facial and body hair? What New Year's resolutions have you already broken? What do you want for Christmas? All sorts of things, both personal, deep, trivial, light-hearted. And we would go into bars and pubs and ask the people that were there. And on one occasion, we asked a very, very sweet, angelic, blonde man who was a printer's assistant. His name was George O'Dowd. And George O'Dowd went on to become, in the early 80s, Boy George. And there he is behind me. And we asked him, did body hair, facial hair, turn him on? Oh, no. Ooh, couldn't stand it. <laughs> horrible, horrible, horrible. But he, he didn't mind it under the armpits or, you know, south of the navel. That was all right. But he liked to see the muscles in the body. He liked to see the veins in the arms, you know, all that sort of stuff. So you never knew who you were going to meet when you went out to Bang Disco, for example, in London or to any of the discos that we'd visit when we'd travel around Britain. We'd go to Cardiff, we'd go to Canterbury, to Cambridge, we'd go to Milton Keynes. And when we went there, we always asked. Now you may ask, who's we? Well, I would go with my trusty photographer, Bob Workman. And in the old days, and we are talking about the old days, we're talking about practically prehistoric days, aren't we, of the 1970s, when we went to a disco or a club and asked people on the dance floor if they would like to be in a photograph, most of them fled into the shadows because we're still talking about a time where it was not okay to wear a pink shirt. And it was certainly not okay in certain professions to be seen dancing with someone of the same sex on the dance floor of a gay club. 
whether it was in Nottingham or whether it was in London. So things have changed because I noticed so many pictures in gay magazines of people dancing and doing all sorts of things. The dance floors are always packed, aren't they? Whereas in the days of gay news and you tell us they weren't. But we had some wonderful times. We met so many people from all walks of life, teachers, publishers, uh, dancers, actors, artists, shoe shop assistants, all kinds of people, electrical engineers, students, uh, geography teachers, uh, rich people, poor people, unemployed people, people of all kinds used to come to gay clubs. And there we'd be from Gay News asking them this fortnight's question. And they would answer. Now, some people in the gay movement thought this was trivialising gay people. They thought that by asking these questions, you know, how do you pick up someone you fancy, that was kind of pandering in a way to the image that gay people had received of being promiscuous and not really taking interest in anything. But some of the questions were deeper. We asked once, are you being served? Which meant, are you being served by the media? Are you being served by education? Are you being served by politics? This was an open-ended question. And people sometimes answered it in very profound ways. As far as, would you like the Queen to continue? Some were very royalist, and some said, she doesn't do anything, does she? And she certainly doesn't uphold the rights of gay people. But, you know, gay people represent a hugely wide spectrum of the population, which is why writing for Gay News as featured editor was both a problem for me and a absolute joy because I had to really stretch my powers of communication in order to get to every nook and cranny of gay Britain, which I think to some extent we did. But You Tell Us was one of the joys, except of course I had to stay up late at night. I was working eventually about six and a half days a week at Gay News and of course going out to clubs was pretty exhausting when you had to be at work, you know, eight o'clock in the morning back in the office. But we did it and it was worth it. So if you're enjoying these gay news historical journeys, tell us, won't you? You tell us, okay? <laughs>